I use databases inside of Obsidian to help me manage content. All of the different community plugins inside of Obsidian, linking them to one another if they are similar or not, ticking them off when I've explored them. And all of my research notes giving me an overview of things that I have questions for, depth, quality, understanding, and lots of other information about the research I'm doing on specific topics. If you go to settings, community plugins, turn on community plugins, and then go to browse, this is the DB folder plugin, but for it to work, you actually need to use DataView. I've done an introduction video to DataView before, which I'll leave above my head, but this uses query language. So I'm going to install and enable DataView, and then I'm going to go to database folder and install and enable that. Plugin. There is no need to touch the DataView settings at all because we're using the DB folder plugin, the database folder plugin instead. And before going through all of these settings, what is it? In the left ribbon bar, you'll see a create new database button. And here it's going to create a database page. So it's still a markdown page that's inside of your vault, but it's viewed as a database. So I'm going to name it database. And for this example, I'm going to use a folder, but you could use a tag, outgoing link, incoming link, or data view query. In this example, I'm going to use the vault folder. There's no other folders in the database at the moment, but it means every file that's added to the vault will be seen in this database page. Create, and you can see we now have a database file page. It's a markdown page with a database view. If we go to the more options panel in the page, you can see open database settings or open as markdown. And this is the markdown page. This is essentially what it's rendering. Now you don't need to look at this ever really, <laughs> uh, but it's there in case you do. I'm going to close the page and then open the page. And now we can see that database view. By pushing the add button, it lets me add a file. I'm going to call it test one and push enter. And you can see it's created a file test one inside of my vault. There is the link to it. And we have a column one in the database. I'm going to click and drag the file heading over. So we've actually got the file first and then the column second. Holding control on my keyboard and clicking on the file name opens up that file. So in test one, this is a markdown page and this is the database page. I have them set up side by side so you can see what's going on. And if I start typing in column one and push enter, the column has created YAML or front matter information inside of the test one page. When I left click on the column, I get a drop down menu. I can rename the column, but the name of the column isn't the same as the ID inside of the page. So at the moment we have a database column name, text property, and then YAML information in the page. If we go to the settings of the column, we have the column ID. So I want this to be the same, typing out text property, and then I'm going to save column ID. And now it's changed the ID inside of the page to text property. But there's more than just a text property type. If we go over to text, you can see we've got number, select, tag, checkbox, date, date, time, and formula. So I'm going to hide this property, then add a new property, which gives me this pop-up window. I have the properties available inside this database. So I'm showing the file and I'm hiding the text property. And in this case, I'm going to add an empty column. So I'm going to add a new column or new property, number property. I'm going to add new column. And in this version, it adds all new properties as a text property. So I'm going to click, go to text, and then go to number. If I type text into the property, it will add the number property ID into the page, but you can see NAN because that's not a number. So when I click out, it's got rid of the text and it's asking for a number, the 27, because that's my lucky number. And it's changed the information inside of the test page to 27. I'm going to insert to the left and the same things happened. It's created a new column called three, but it's a text column. So I'm going to make this a select column. Now I can add in select options, but my preference is to go into the settings and add them there. So click on the column title, go to settings. I'm going to change the ID from new column three to select property, save column ID. Now I can add some labels. Then I'm going to select a color for the label. So done, I want to be green. To do is going to be red. Working is going to be orange. And I'm going to choose this orange, push enter. Now, when I click into the select property, I have a drop down of done, to do, or working. So done. And you can see the select property is done. Or I can make it to do or working. You get the point. Go insert to the right. Now, when I make a tags property, call it tags. Then if I add labels, homework, school, I actually want all of these to be the same color. So I can click on the color picker. Just hover over the one atop and now it's the same color and I can do the same for this one. Now when I select a tag, so home, it's essentially a multi-select. So you can see we've got new column, we've got home, and then we've got school and we're just going to leave it as though too. Now, just as a note here, when I click in, I can't actually click on the X to get rid of it. It's one of those things that isn't quite the way I would want it yet. So when you click in, you push escape on the keyboard, then you can push the X to get rid of something. But I'm going to bring the school back in. Now, because this is just a YAML property at the moment, it's called new column four. It's not actually a tag inside of Obsidian. So in the tags pane, they're completely empty. But if we change the column ID to tags, then save the column ID, you can see Obsidian is now reading tags and then home school, and it's actually reading them as 
has tags inside of Obsidian. So at the moment, we've got a home tag and a school tag. And if I click work, it's now going to add the work tag to the page and it's going to appear in the tags pane. A checkbox property works pretty much as you would expect. When you tick it, it says true. And when you don't tick it, it says false. A date property, again, works as expected. When you click in the box, you get a date picker. You click on the date and it shows the date. Date time, again, very similar. You click in the box, you get the date picker, but you also get a time picker in half an hour slots. But you're not limited to those options. If we go into the test page and type in something else, so I now have property or YAML information called information. And then inside there, we have amazing stuff. Now, when I push the plus button, instead of going add empty column, I'm going to go select an existing column. I get a list of all the properties that I've hidden, but I also get that one that I've just created. So the information property or metadata isn't in this list of hidden properties, but I'm going to add it. Now I'm showing this YAML information as a column inside of the database and I can make the column a little bit bigger so I can actually read what's going on. If we go to the settings of the text property, we can choose to align the content, whether it's left, right, middle, or just justified. We can wrap the content if it's too long. And then there are link options and media options inside the text property as well. And now if I make this property smaller, you can see instead of it cutting off and having a scroll bar, it's wrapping the text. So we can make it an inline field. So we can click that on. And now the column has a star or an asterisk next to it, meaning it's in line, but at the moment it's not in line because it hasn't been updated. I'm going to change the wording a little bit so it's got an update to actually push. And now it's moved the information in line. So it's moved it outside of those three dashes, which is YAML, and moved it in line. And instead of one colon, it's got two, just like the way data view works. Now I can add a link to the page. So I've created things as a page. You can see on the left side, it's just a things page. Because it's a page, inside the vault, it's appeared as another row in the database, but it's also showing as a link inside of the text property. If I were to use an alias for that page, I then need to update the database view because it doesn't dynamically do it. It needs to be refreshed. So for this case, I'm going to open another page and then open the database page. And now it's showing the alias. And I've just done the exact same thing. I've pasted an image inside of the information. I've reloaded the database page and now I have an image there. So we've now got a fair few properties in here that we can show or hide. I can use the search bar to search through any of the pages. So I've typed in test and it's showing test, the total search result showing as a number. And if we click on the three lines, we can get to the database specific settings. So we have current folder selected because that's what we selected to start with. We can add a name to the database, add a description to the database. But personally, I just rely on the name of the file. We can adjust the cell size. So compact, normal or wide for preferences. If we do want to use lots of columns, we can make the first one sticky. So if I bring back this panel, you can see at the bottom of the screen, we've got scroll bar. If I move to the right, the first column, the file name is sticky and it's not going anywhere. There is then and metadata information, which you can automatically put in as a column. So that can be created, modified, task, which I'll show in a second, in links and out links. If you go to the DB folder settings, you can actually activate these by default whenever you create a new database. So you now have a created time for all of the files. You have a modified time for all the files. You've got the task. Now there's no task at the moment, but it's showing data view query. So it's doing a data view query in the back end to find the tasks. The in links, which are essentially the backlinks, and we've got one because things is linked in test one. So that's the backlink for that page. And then we have outgoing links. So there's the outgoing link to the things page and there's the image that we've got an image file for. Now, if I go into the test one page and add a task, because of the way the database folder works, it needs to be refreshed. And like I said earlier, that can be done by going onto another page and opening it back up again. And now the task is being shown. Now I know it's not ideal, but I actually quite like the fact that you need to go and refresh it because when you tick a task off, and you're like, oh no, I need it. You have to go back to the page and it's a pain. Now I know that when I tick a task off, I need to actually manually refresh it, but I recognize automatic refresh would be nice, something that the developer can have a look at. And the task property works just like a data view query. So if you tick off the task inside the data view query, it ticks it off in the page as well. When adding new fields, you can have it default to adding fields in line instead of inside the YAML. You can choose it to be at the top or at the bottom of the page. I personally leave this off because I want everything in the YAML right at the top, sort of hidden away. I would advise keeping this section in default because there's no reason to change it. If you do want to add formulas, which is JavaScript, you'd need to activate the automations if you're using external formulas, but that's for advanced users and most people won't need. Then you can change the amount of rows shown. So at the moment, we've got two rows, which are essentially two pages or two files and that goes all the way up to 200. And as you can see, you can add a template folder for when you add new rows or new
new files. So I've created a template folder, example template, I've added a heading and then a first task. I can now select the template folder. Now when I push the plus button, I get an option to select the template. And in this case, it's going in the folder and example template's the only one available. So test two, enter. Now when I go into the page, it's got the heading one and the first task. And because you can do this rapid fire, I'm just gonna go test three, test four, test five. And it's applied the template to all of these pages. And if I hit control on my keyboard and hover over, you've got test two, test three, test four and test five all with the heading and task in there. The reason this example template is showing is because it's inside the root folder. So the main example folder because that's what the database is looking at. So I've now made a notes folder and I'm going to click, hold shift, click, drag and drop and then I'm also going to drag the database file inside of this folder and now it's only looking for the files inside of the folder because in the settings it says in current folder but we're still using the template folder for the templates. If, however, you want to group the files by the columns, so the YAML information, you can do automatically with the DB folder plugin. So I can look for a select field, in this case, the status. Now it's going to configure each file according to what the status information is. I can make it so that they're grouped in folders automatically, and I can remove any empty folders if things are moved out of them. And this setting will essentially move any file that doesn't have a status property will be moved to the root folder. The one thing to keep in mind about this is this this is referring to the name of the column. So this is the status, the name of the column, but the functionality is based off the column ID, which isn't always the same. So you need to go in and make sure that this is what you've set it. So status. Now, because I've got test one as working, there is a working folder inside of the notes folder. And if I go to the test five, add done, it's created a done folder. And inside the done folder, we have test five. So everything is now automatically grouped in folders via the status property. So working and working or inside working, etc, etc. And things doesn't have anything. So it's in the root folder, which is the notes folder. That's the original folder, the database file is in. And if I was to move test four from to do to done, you can see it's deleted the to do folder and moved it to done. Now at the moment in this database, if I was to delete a property, so I come down and delete this, nothing happens in the main page. So all of the property information is still here. We've got information, amazing skills and the photo. However, I can go to remove fields. And if I enable this, it means when I delete a field, it will delete it in the page as well. But because we deleted the column, it's no longer hidden because we've deleted it from this database. So we need to find it again, create it. And now we've created it, it's in line. Now when we delete it, it's going to delete the information from the pages as well. You can set up the columns, so the properties information by default templates using one of the pages. I would advise not doing that so you know exactly what's going into the pages because they might be slightly different, but you can do it if you know what YAML information or metadata properties is already in the pages but like I say I personally set it up from the like ground up and if you use the all fields it can override other ones and I don't want to lose data so I just never push this button and then we get to some of the exciting things we can do so I'm going to sort in ascending order I'm then going to sort checkbox in descending order. And now I have a priority. So it's sorting by status first and then by checkbox. And you can keep going with all those sorts. I'm going to remove both sorts for the moment. Then next to the search, we have our filters. At the moment, there's a line going across it. So there's no filters active. So when we add something, it won't be added. So I'm going to add a filter. And this is showing the column IDs of all of these properties that we've added. I'm going to filter by checkbox. And you can use any of the operators or any of the commands down the bottom. And I want to say checkbox box equals true because that is the word for a completed checkbox that's inside the page. So I've set the filter. Now when I go to the top at the moment, it's got the filters disabled. If I click on that, it's now enabled them. So it's only looking at the true checkboxes, i.e. ones completed. Something to bear in mind currently, if I was to go false, some of the information isn't in the pages because they haven't been created yet. So inside of the test one page, we got checkbox false. But in the test five page, nothing has been added yet because at the moment there's no way to automatically add YAML information. So there's there's no information whether it's true or false. So the filter when it's looking for it is looking for equals false, but it doesn't equal anything, so it's not finding it. So if we say checkbox doesn't equal true, we get the same results and we don't have to middle around with all this YAML information that's not there yet. Now I'm going to add a group, call it home done, say checkbox equals true because I want it to be done. I'm then going to add an atomic filter, go to the tags, contains, home. Now at the moment there's no results, but if I click on the group filter, it gets rid of that filter and we can see everything else that's going on. So we're going to go in here, make that home. Now when we go to home done, it's showing test three. If I remove that and add a group, 
to this. I'm still looking for home, but I want to add school. So it could be home or school while it's completed. So the, we've got the and in the first bit. So it's done and either home or school. So if we change the things to work and leave, refresh the filter so you can turn the filter off and then turn it on, it refreshes the database view. Now it's gone because it's not school or home, which of course you can expand in literally any direction. Now I'm going to add another group, call it no date, look for date, and then is empty. But at the moment, as you can see, I'm using both filter groups. So I'm trying to do everything at once. So if I tick off of that one, it's now looking for just the files that there's no date for. So this one doesn't have a date. So it's showing here. If I tick the filter group off, you can see everything there. So these were the two that were showing in that group filter. If we go ahead and add a date, then update the filter view. Now it's gone. For those of you interested in formulas, if you create a formula property and go to the settings, it's very similar to the text property, but when you come down here, you have a formula input, and you can see you can make that bigger by using the arrow down bottom right, and then write out a formula. This is an example trying to get the status property and each information for the row. It's gone to the status property, had a look at what's in there, and then output exactly what it says, so working, working, done, 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 and that one's empty. As mentioned earlier in the video, you can enable JavaScript formulas so you can create a file in JavaScript and then use that inside of the formula property. But that is very complicated. And if you know JavaScript, great. If not, don't worry about it. This is a shorter video that's included in my extended brain course that goes into more detail about workflows, nuanced use cases and other tools such as Zotero, Morgan and other things that I use to get my work and research done. More information in the description below.